So right before the top of the hour, I was talking about a couple of things that this date uh, had happened on it. And 35 years ago on this date, the AIDS virus was identified. And so um, that's a good time for us to talk about HIV AIDS. And we do so with a, uh, I, I believe she teaches at the med school at the University of Missouri, also does practice there. And my guest is an infectious disease internal medicine specialist. And that's Dr. Dima Dondachi. It's nice to meet you. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. So um, well, let's talk about this. 35 years ago, so the virus was identified. Um, what has that meant in 35 years? You're one who has decided to go into this field of infectious disease. You work with this. Where are we now after 35 years at understanding the virus and treating it or preventing it? Right. So the reason why I wanted to be here today is that really to start with a positive note, over the last 30 years, we've done so much better in terms of HIV care. Like now, people who live with HIV can live longer and healthier lives. So we've done really, you know, a good job giving them effective, highly effective HIV treatment. However, unfortunately, like there, we still have 40,000 new infections every year that happen in the U.S. 40,000 so, in the U.S.? Correct. All right. And uh, in Missouri, is like, so if you compare like the states to uh, the state of Missouri compared to the U.S., you see that over the last years, we have new infections happening in the U.S., but it has been stable, the number of new infections. But in Missouri State, we have an 11% increase in new HIV infection. And if you even dissect it more, unfortunately, in central Missouri, we have 170% increase in new HIV infections. Over what time period? From 2013 to 2016. Wow. So it's a dramatic that is increase. A big increase. The numbers are small, but still, it's the percentage increase that's very uh, dramatic. So my next question, I think everybody would say, well, why? Why? What, what, is yeah. the, what is the guess as to why this has happened? Right. And I think like the reasons are really complex, but and no, there's no easy explanation or one explanation for, for why um, there is an increase. But there are several factors, and it's important to look at them in order to say, like, what are the options we have in order pr- to prevent the HIV from spreading? I would say the first thing is that people don't know they have HIV. Like many people do not get tested. And unfortunately, you can have HIV for so many years before having any symptoms. Really? There's no symptoms that come early on? Some people would experience just a small number, small fraction, actually, of people would experience symptoms like flu-like symptoms. So really, they might, you know, think that they had some kind of flu or um, some viral illness and it will go away. And then after that, years after, they will not have any symptoms until the HIV attacks their immune system, and this is when they develop, you know, symptoms for that. So when they don't know they have HIV, they go on and infect Mm -hmm. other people. So even the CDC, the Centers of Disease Control, tell us like one in seven are unaware of their diagnosis. And the only way really to know is to go get tested. There's no way around it. I'm going to ask this question. Do you think that there will be part of a routine physical where testing of HIV is going to be part of a routine physical? Well, all the recommendation now recommends that everyone should get tested at least once in their lifetime and then more often if they are at risk of having HIV infection, acquiring the virus. Is it a simple blood test? I mean, could it be done as long as well as whenever I go and they take my blood out for physical and they test it for all these other things? Could it be just simply yes. incorporated that way? Huh? Sure, exactly. And this is what we kind of promote that, you know, if you've never had HIV test done, then do it like once and, um, you know, make sure you don't have it and... That's it. How much of a complacency do you think has set in? In other words, people saying, well, you know, it's not as it's not talked about as much as it used to be. It doesn't seem to be as big a problem. As you said, there are means that people can go through it and live with HIV for a long time. Different messages than what we used to hear. Right. So that's exactly like some people think that, you know, the people who are most affected by this increase in HIV infection are young the young people. And they, and many people say that probably this young generation are too young to remember mm. how was it, the HIV epidemic, and how bad it was, how many people died of this. And I would say, that's right, you know, HIV is no longer a death sentence. We have uh, effective treatment, and people live almost a nearly like normal lifespan compared to other people. However, it's a, it's a chronic disease. Unfortunately, we do not have cure for it. And it's not like you, it's, a, it's not a death sentence, but it's a life sentence where you have to go to the doctors, you have to take treatment, complications. The social impact on, on the people's life and social aspect is very important as well. So there is medication that would help people live with it. Is there, 
work being done towards maybe a vaccine or something else that you would take to try to prevent mumps or chickenpox or something? And also you would have a vaccine that you would be required to take somewhere along the way to protect you from HIV? Well, I, I wish we had an HIV vaccine. That would be kind of the best to have a vaccine really to prevent the disease. But until now, we do not have that. And it's not clear if we will have an HIV vaccine in the near future. Um, but, go yeah, ahead. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. So we have another way. So I wanted to stress and increase awareness about an option, a really powerful option that we have to prevent HIV, which is the uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis. Which is, so in, in other terms, it's a pre-exposure prevention, which is, it works as in you take a pill every day to prevent HIV, and it's very effective. So this is a topic that comes with it some weight and some baggage also. Some people who are listening to us to more, this morning probably very bothered by this because of HIV AIDS being associated with a certain type of population, maybe the gay population or the drug using needle sharing population. What do you say to them who would say, you know what, I don't want to hear this because it's people living their lives the wrong way that get this. And so it's not ever going to impact me. Yeah, this is really disheartening because like, so the thing is we have to move away. Part of the problem is like when people are un until in 2019, People living with HIV suffer the stigma. You know, they don't want to get treated. They don't want to go to the doctor or be even seen taking medication for HIV. And that's affect all of us because, like, if someone is not treated, their risk of transmitting the HIV infection is even higher. So I would say we have to move away from, you know, uh, shaming these people and, uh, you know, uh, associating the stigma to it because that would affect all of us. What do we need to know right now? I mean... I used to be on the Regional AIDS Interfaith Network with uh, when uh, Cheryl Smith was here, her husband, prior to your time, Larry Smith used to coach MU football, but she was very active in the community and she headed up RAIN, the Regional AIDS Interfaith Network. And at that point in time, which would have been in the mid 90s, there were so many things that were scary about this and people had all these uh, suppositions and fears. I think we've gotten a long ways past that now, as we've just discussed, but at the same time, uh, it's it's not something that you can ignore as being a part of the reality out there for so many people. But I mean, it's it's different now. And I guess part of me thinks that we've got a success story on this. But the other part is that how how can we rest or can we rest saying, well, you know, it's, it's not the biggest issue right now anymore. Well, I would say that there are still one million people living with HIV in the U.S and like 37 million living uh, worldwide, and it's still a killing disease. So I would say that I would not take it lightly, and I would say we have all the means right now to end the HIV epidemic. So We were so scared of so much, though, of, of just um, being in contact with certain people, yeah. maybe just touching them. Uh, there was confusion about blood, saliva, everything else. I mean, uh, is there anything that you can add? We still need to be on alert for those kinds of situations, or are we past that understanding more how it is transmitted? I think people know more about like how HIV is transmitted, but I think we are, you know, I have to stress that, you know, having a protected sex and using condoms, it's very important, not only to prevent HIV, but also to prevent other sexually transmitted disease and um, that we are seeing that it's on the rise as well. So it's very important people to know that people are going to do what they do in their life. And uh, but it's important to have a protected, healthy sexual life. What would you say as a conclusion here? What would you say to leave people with uh, uh, in addition to what you just said, which is crucial? But. I would say that we can end this. Um, go get tested if you've never been tested. Um, if you have HIV get treated and see, um, you know, your healthcare provider and that have like be aware of this option that we have about the HIV to prevent the pill that would prevent HIV and ask if you think that you're in doubt that, you know, you might benefit from this, ask your healthcare provider and uh, or come to us at, you know, at MU Healthcare that in the ID clinic, we offer that option as well. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome. What a time. I mean, 35 years ago, it was discovered. And we've come a long way since then in understanding it and treating it. So again, it is kind of a success story, but it is there. And it's a reality in many people's lives. I don't want to see the spike anymore. That's right. Uh, thank you, doctor. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Dr. Dima Dandachi has been our guest. You're listening to News Talk 1400 KFRU.